Daddy, can you take me how to make foodie? In this video, I'm gonna break down how I created this stylized Miles Morales and Blender. I'm gonna show you the tools I used and where I got the inspiration from. For the past couple months, I've been spending a lot of time digging through the internet, following tutorials, trying to figure out a way to make more organic, fun, eye-catching models in Blender. I came across a lot of different techniques and tools and through that experimentation, it kind of morphed into what you see now. So I'm gonna break all of this down for you. Through my research, I came across a few artists who had some really dope styles. And as I dug deeper into them, I found out that they were using Quill, which is a VR kind of sculpting 3D tool. I don't have a VR headset and I wanted to figure out how to create this look directly in Blender. So it sent me down this deep rabbit hole, researching everybody who I could find on YouTube who used Quill and kind of looking at the geometry and breaking down how it's done. And basically I found that it looks like the textures are animated and then there's a lot of like individual splines that are almost like hair carbs that make up the geometry. So once I figured that out, I started experimenting with some of the tools that are used to kind of get that painterly look that's so popular now, right? So I came across this tool by Tim Dubb and I noticed that when he was going over the geometry, it almost looked like those hair cards. So I figured, okay, let me take this tool and use it to create the look that I'm going for. As I started experimenting with the tool and the look, I noticed that it kind of looked like paper mache. So I started kind of studying how these different paper mache sculptures looked, how they layered paper on top of each other to create really cool forms. So let's get into it. The first thing that I did was I started with the model. This is the model from Fortnite of Miles Morales. I started pulling assets from online like Sketchfab, places like that, of different clothing items to make up his outfit. The colors didn't matter, the geometry didn't really matter. I just wanted the overall shape and form because I'm gonna end up going over the whole thing using that tool that I showed you earlier with the splines. And here I'm just going through using my sculpting brush and making sure everything sits on the body like I want. At this stage, I wanted to clean up my structure a little bit and start naming my different layers because it gets more complicated the more you add. So as you can see here in the outliner, I'm just going through making sure that everything's named properly so that I can quickly find it later when I start adding my splines. It's very important to stay organized. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for the card tool, but here's a quick rundown. You're gonna start with the Bezier curve and normally I just name it like whatever it's gonna be. So here I named a black suit. You're gonna to go to your modifiers, you're gonna to go to unassigned and you're gonna select SB spline brush cards. I usually like to change the matte cap to the one that shows the normals because you're gonna see some really interesting things with the normals as you start to paint the splines. The next thing you're gonna do is select a surface object which is going to be your base mesh and then you're also going to want to click on shrink wrap. You're gonna to go to draw and edit mode and very important here, you wanna make sure that you select surface. If you don't select surface, sometimes it doesn't really work well. You can change the radius down here at the bottom. I like to go kind of small. Then down below for resample curves, I like to go to 0.01. I just found that that makes the splines conform to the body better. Once all of this is set up, you literally just start drawing in edit mode. So you just go over the whole body. You can change the radius if you wanted bigger strokes. You can change it smaller if you wanted more detail. And as you see later on in some of the clothing, I did use some smaller strokes, like around the cuffs of the sleeve. Um, another thing you wanna keep in mind is you still wanna follow the flow of the body. So if you're familiar with sculpting or if you ever did like retopology, you're gonna wanna use some of that same flow to the geometry that you're laying down. It's just gonna look better in the end product. So now I'm gonna speed this up for a while. You literally have to do it to every single piece of geometry that you're gonna use. So enjoy the music, I'll be back in a second.
So usually I like to set up some lights about halfway through the process, just so I can kind of start to see how the lights are gonna interact with the geometry. I also throw on some basic materials as well and just set up a, a simple light setup, play with some different colors, some different color temperatures and see what that's looking like. And then I continue going on with the process of building out my geometry. So after all my geometry is laid down, the next thing I like to do is prep my model for rigging and texturing. So the first thing I do is I take all of the splines, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna convert those to a mesh. It's gonna be pretty heavy in geometry, so I like to use quad remesher. And once it's remeshed, I like to also put a decimate modifier on there. I usually go 0.5 and decimate it to get the geometry down. And then I go through and label all my materials and do a smart UV unwrap so that it's ready for texturing. For rigging, I use AccuRig. It's a free program by Reillusion. Uh, there's a ton of tutorials online and it's super, super easy to use. So I use the CC plugin in Blender. So once it's rigged up, I export it to FBX and then I can go to import character, import that character into Blender. And then if you go down to rigging and animation, you can click Rigify and it generates a Rigify rig. So here I'm just testing it out to make sure that it's deforming the way I want it to deform. After that, we move into texturing. I use the Substance Painter plugin in Blender for texturing. So I put those basic textures in there, but then I come back and redo it in Substance Painter so that I can actually paint on top of it. But you really don't need Substance Painter to be able to do this process. You can actually do it in Quixel Bridge, which is free, or you can even do vertex painting if you wanted to go that route. So here I'm going through adding brush strokes, adding more of that organic hand-drawn feel to the model. So I'm going through doing the clothing, some of the skin, doing some half tones, some kind of spray paint texturing over it as well. So once my texturing is done, a substance painter, I export all that out and then I come back to Blender, assign those textures to my model, then go through and just readjust my lights, try to get the final look that I'm going for to see how that light is interacting with the new painted materials I just created. So once my model is all set up, the materials are looking the way I want it. I go into the pose mode. I wanted to go off of this leap of faith uh, image from the movie. I thought it looked really cool with the buildings behind it. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm using that rigified rig to just go through and kind of mimic that pose. I know it won't be exactly the same, but I'm just trying to get it as close as possible. I'm using um, the sculpt brush to kind of bring those clothes out a little bit and add that movement to it. And then here I was experimenting with how I wanted to do the buildings. Um, I was playing with some different things and then I ended up finding like a city scene just with a basic model behind it. So that's what I ended up using. Um, I'm adjusting the colors here, experimenting with some different gradients and things in the background. Um, Here I took this halftone image. You can't really tell that it's halftone now that it's blurred out in the background with the depth of field, but basically I wanted to look like lights in the background. If you kind of look over here to the right on the reference image, you can see how it has some like purple and pinkish and blue lights down there at the bottom. So I wanted to play off of that look. And I knew that once it was out of focus, it would kind of look like light streaks. So that's what I ended up with for the look on this. Here I'm adding the shoelaces in. Um, I'm just using some curves for that. So the final thing I like to do is just add another layer of depth by painting over the final render. So I did my color correction in Photoshop and then this process can also be done in Photoshop. I just kind of like to do it on the tablet. So I'm going through adding some paint marks, some paint, paint splatters. Um, and just experimenting with different things. I ended up going with these lines here to add motion like he was falling. 
And then I just went through each image and just added like motion lines or just any accent lines that would really stand out. Some of these halftone textures obviously is used in the movie and it almost looks like it sits out on top of them in 3D space. Um, this could probably actually be done in Blender too, using like a halftone texture in the alpha channel, but I was just kind of lazy and just did it this way. So here I'm finishing up the shoes. I'm experimenting with different things, seeing what it looks like. And then once I go through that process, I'm pretty much done. So this is the final render. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know. Feel free to subscribe. Until next time, peace.